What's up guys, this is Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba Marina. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the breathing process and what actually happens each time we take a breath. We're going to look at the differences between breathing here on land versus breathing underwater. We're going to talk about Boyle's Law, Henry's Law, and Dalton's Law and how that gas exchange occurs and what each gas does as we breathe it in. So what I've got here is basically just the lung structure of the human body Inside the lungs, we have what's called bronchioles. This is these little chambers or little tunnels, if you will, branches that the gas travels through. At the end of each bronchiole, we're going to have a bunch of little air sacs. And these air sacs we call alveoli. That's where the actual gas exchange happens during the inhalation and exhalation process. So what do we breathe? Well, we typically breathe air. And we understand that air is the most common gas that we're going to breathe, but it's a mixture of gases. And that mixture, of course, is oxygen and nitrogen. Now, even if we breathe up a mixture of, say, nitrox, that oxygen and nitrogen is still there. It's just a different percentage. Those percentages that we breathe, of course, being 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. And that's what we call Dalton's Law, or partial pressure. It's just a percentage of the gas that we breathe and how it affects our body. Now, we need to understand the differences between oxygen and nitrogen. Oxygen, I call this a usable gas because we use it to metabolize. It gives us energy. It fuels our body. And the nitrogen itself, all we really use it for, since it's an inert gas, simply means it's not good, nor is it bad for us. It's just an inert gas. I'm going to call it a taxi cab. And if we think of what a taxi is, a taxi is what we use to transport ourselves from one destination to the other. And sometimes that taxi cab can kind of hang out and wait on us to finish our, say, our shopping spree or whatnot. And then we can come back out of the store, jump back in the taxi cab, and it'll take us back home. So thinking of it in those terms, it'll make understanding the breathing process a whole lot easier. So the nitrogen is going to act as a taxi cab for the oxygen to ride in on as we start the breathing process. So as I breathe in, oxygen and nitrogen comes down through the bronchioles and out into what's called the alveolis, or these little grape-looking things. And like I said, these are basic air sacs at the end of the bronchioles or the branches in our lung where gas exchange happens. So inside the bronchioles, now I have oxygen and nitrogen just hanging out in each one. Now, as stated before, the oxygen itself is what I use to fuel my body. It's what gives me energy. And connected to each alveoli is two little strips, if you will, or tubes or channels. And the first one, this red one here, we're going to call that the arteries. And what arteries do is transfer oxygenated blood from my lungs into my body's organs so that they can operate. So the oxygen will actually travel through the arteries and fuel my body. The nitrogen, as the oxygen travels through, just kind of hangs out. It sits there. It doesn't really do much. It's kind of like the taxi cab sitting outside the store waiting on you to return. Now, as the oxygen travels through my body, it metabolizes, it gets used up, and it converts itself or changes into what's called CO2 or carbon dioxide. Basically, that's a gas, a bad gas, if you will, and it's just an expired or a waste product of the diffusion process of oxygen. Now, as that CO2 travels back to the lungs, it actually comes back in through what's called the veins. Now, once again, veins transfers unoxygenated blood back into the lungs. As that CO2 comes back in, it remixes with the nitrogen. We're going to call that CO2 into, if you will. And it jumps back in the taxi cab of the nitrogen. And then, of course, we exhale. During the exhalation process, we get rid of that expired gas. And that is the most simplest, basic understanding of how gas exchange happens here at the surface. Now, underwater, it happens a little bit differently. The general process is still the same, meaning I simply breathe it in. That gas mixture goes into the alveolis, so I've got O2 into in each alveoli here. The oxygen is still going to travel through my body, throughout the arteries, but instead of the nitrogen just kind of chilling out and hanging in the alveolis, what happens is, is that nitrogen begins to absorb into my body. And this is the process we call Henry's Law. That absorption rate is going to determine or depend upon how deep you are and how long you stay. And the reason that is, is because of Boyle's Law. We understand Boyle's Law deals with pressure and volume. As I increase pressure, simply meaning as I go deeper, those nitrogen bubbles are going to shrink up, volume is going to decrease, and through Henry's Law, I absorb that nitrogen, if you will, into my body's tissues. 
Tissues can be anything. It can be your skin, your bone, your toenails, your hair follicles, your eyeballs. It can be any tissue throughout your body. Now we do have what's called fast tissues and slow tissues. Fast tissues are going to absorb and disperse that those bubbles quicker than what slow tissues are, but it all depends on how deep you are and how long you stay. Now we can resort back to the dive tables or the dive computer, and I know you've seen this chart before with me. As we breathe in underwater, we're going to absorb nitrogen. We take we call that ohm gassing. During our surface interval, we bleed off a little bit of nitrogen so we get rid of it. However, we still have some residual left over, and during the next consecutive dive, we're going to add to it. And that's the ohm gassing process. This nitrogen actually absorbs into our system, and then as we come up, pressure decreases through Boyle's Law again. Some of that nitrogen will actually dissolve back out of the solution, if you will, or back through our tissues into the alveolis, so it can still mix with the CO2, so during the exhalation process, I still get rid of it. However, there are some small traces of nitrogen left over. We call this simply residual nitrogen. So if you think of it in terms of like this, we absorb the nitrogen. As we dissolve it back into the, the solution, if you will, or back into the alveolis, only half of it stays away. So I'm going I'm to erase half of it, and then I'm going to put that half here in the bottom. So it's still there, it's just not the whole amount of it. So we kind of resort back to the Dalton's Law. What's the percentage of it? Well, that percentage is different for everybody. It depends on the fast tissues, slow tissues, how long you was there, and how deep you went. But the process of breathing and gas exchange is still the same. It's just the amount or the percentage of gas is what changed. So guys, I really hope this video didn't confuse you. I hope it helps you understand the breathing process and the diffusion process of gas throughout your body. If you want to know more on this topic, check out your local SSI facility and take their science and diving class. It's an absolute must for anybody who wants to become a dive professional or anybody that just wants to expand their knowledge in scuba diving. If you like this video, simply smash that like button for me. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.